Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we will be discussing about agent-based models and demand models. First, we will give a, ver a very brief introduction about these two models and then we will go into detail about first the agent-based models that are included in the lead platform and the demand models that are included in this platform. Finally, we will have a summary of what we have learned today. First, what is an agent-based model? An agent-based model is a simulation-based model where the model focuses on the behavior of the individual agent. So we'll have to a description of each agent, which role does each of the agents have, which are the interactions within the agents. So for example, what is the interaction between a shipper and the transport service providers? And we can have an insight and more detail about how each of the agents uh, make decisions. So, as a summary, we'll have we will simulate the behavior and the interactions of the decisions of each agent, and as a result, we will have the behavior or of all the urban freight system. Then, what are the? What is a demand model? Demand model is a statistical model or a simulation-based model where we simulate, as the name says, the demand of a certain product or service or um, whatever you can think of. The objective of this kind of model is to predict or explain how much quantity of a product of a, or a service is, is used by the population or by the different organizations or agents involved in the urban freight system. Normally, for example, demand models are part of agent-based models because they help us understand and model what type of choices and decisions are done in the urban freight system or any other system you want to model with an agent-based model. As we mentioned before, Agent-based models uh, based on simulation, so we simulate one day or a particular sequence of days that, of the behavior. Um, we model the urban freight system agents that we mentioned in the uh, last video. So we we'll model the shippers, what is the behavior of the shippers, the transport service providers, what do they do, which type of network or which type of delivery routes do they take. We also model the customers, so what drives their demand, how much parcels will they consume. And also we can model with some assumptions what the behavior of the public authority. What does the public authority do and how does this affect the decisions and the behavior of the different agents. We include two type, two models, two agent-based models in the lead platform. One is MassSim and the other one is MassGT. MassGT is an agent-based transport simulation that allows us to study a detailed interplay between the travelers and freight vehicles during an average day. This allows us to estimate the impact of policies and new transport solutions uh, embedded in the territory and the population. Although MatSim is mainly a passenger-based model, this is, uh, it is very useful to understand the dynamics of a city and how do passenger choices interact with um, freight um, traffic. So what MatSim does is to simulate a household, so the decision of a household, let's say uh, two parents and two kids, and they simulate what are they going to do over the day? So which activities do they do? When do they do them? And which modes do they take to the different activities? Let's say work or study. These uh, decisions are uh, affected by the context. So the traffic and the different costs and times of the different modes. So when there is more traffic, they might choose another mode. This traffic can also be um, made by other people, so other households, and also by freight demand. The other households um, 
and they interact with this household, with the network, in a series of um, runs until it converges to a more stable um, situation, making it uh, the final network uh, loading and times um, of the effect of whatever policy you are making. The other agent-based model that we use in the lead platform is MassGT. MassGT is an urban freight agent-based model that allows us to represent the heterogeneity of city logistics. So we have as agents the producers, the consumers, and the carriers. It is shipment-based, that is, that the main unit of decision for the carriers is the shipment. And this makes uh, that it, this model has a lot of uh, logistical properties and decision making involved in it, so makes it more realistic to what actual companies and shippers and, uh, and carriers are doing. It has also has a layered approach to decision making, so it separates what are strategic decisions like a warehouse location or um, supply network. Um, design with tactical decisions to this how to organize, for example, next day deliveries. By simulating each delivery, then all they they can up, they add up into the network loading, so we can have KPIs such as kilometers uh, carried by vans, um, congestion networks, and uh, emissions. The other model that we will discuss in this video are demand models. Demand models study how much and why certain product or service is being consumed. Traditionally in transport, uh, the demand is estimated through traditional four-step models, so the generation of trips, the distribution of trips, the model choice, and finally the assignment to the network. However, we can also include as a demand model, so demand synthesizers that simulate the the demand or the people that will demand certain product or service and choice models that help us estimate how and why a certain product is consumed. In our digital twin, in the lead platform, we'll include these discrete choice models to in order to understand and to estimate and to quantify why a decision for certain transport or parcel is done. We also include parcel generation or parcel synthesis in order to simulate how many parcels and from where to where are being estimated. And also population synthesis in order to estimate and to understand the population distribution and the demand for transport and parcels. The first demand model that we will discuss are discrete choice models. Discrete choice models help us to understand why certain decisions may, uh, decisions are being done. For example, why do people choose between different carriers? Or for example, why do people adopt crowd shipping uh, in comparison to traditional couriers? This, this is done through a statistical uh, method in order to Consider discrete choices, so choose mode A or mode B, choose carrier A and carrier B, and to traduce them into the preferences of the consumers. And we estimate what is called a utility function, where we parameterize the demand of the consumer. So we know how much the people value uh, cost, uh, level of service, reliability, and other parameters. Another type of demand model included in the digital twin are the parcel generation or parcel synthesis. These models take into consideration households, number of households, the type of household, and average um, demand for household and other household characteristics in order to simulate how many parcels would go to this particular household. In aggregation, we can have the demand for parcels um, were uh, specialized all through the city according to the density of population, the amount of households, and other parameters that are useful. 
Finally, we talk about the population synthesis. So the population synthesis, similar to the parcel synthesis, simulates the population um, in the city. This allows us to estimate the demand for transport and other uh, goods or services. In this video, we have, we have discussed what is an agent's model. So it's a model that simulates the behavior of individual agents and their interactions. What is a demand model? That is a, a model that allows us to understand why a certain demand is, uh, is happening and how much of it. And also we have discussed what is both of their role in the urban freight system to, that is to simulate and to understand how much of certain good or services is being transported in the city. This is a key input for other models in order to understand and quantify the effect of parcel demand or freight demand in the urban system. Please join us for the next videos to understand other type of models that are being that are being used in the lead platform. And please don't hesitate to contact us in case you have any doubts about the contents of this video.